Hello, and welcome to the first Force of Will box opening on TCG Player. My name is Kristen. And I'm Liana. Today, we are opening a box of Twilight Wanderer, which released last Friday. This is the second set in the Alice Cluster, and it's um, so far the Alice Cluster has been focusing around the Seven Kings of the Land. There's been some Feldmans, Evil Alice, all that good stuff. Valentina, you know, okay. kind of takes over everything. Open shoes. Okay. All right. So let us get right to it. I can't open it. All right. We got Scorn of Alice. Wind Sprite. Oh, we got some fairies in this. Right. Water Sprite. A lot of common fairies in this set. Yeah. A reprint of Young Knight of Gloria. The final word. This was a pain in the you know card during um during the pre-release. During the pre-release, yeah. Blocking <laughs> resonator you get plus thousand plus a thousand. Oh, we got Etna, the goddess of jealousy. This card is all about the regalia hate. Um, it's going to change the format significantly. It's going to be a lot harder to get away with running, you know, four bows, four demon swords. I think she'd be more or less um, a sideboard card as well. It depends on the meta. So many regalia is so strong right now. It's a pretty safe bet. So we have a foil darkness magic stone. That is the first for this series. And it looks like a foil barrier of shadows. This is a pretty good addition for one darkness. Um, your opponent has to pay one more to play judgment or god art abilities, as well as pay one more in order to activate regalia abilities. So that is actually a interesting card. Maybe we can set that down. Um, we can put this in the other one. Okay. All right, so we're starting with laying the foundation. That card is not good at all. I don't recommend ever playing it in any format. There is a lake, mass-produced giant landmine. This card is really good if there are more stealth cards, but as is, it's going to be very predictable. Your opponent's going to know exactly what you're trying when you put that in stealth. Uh, Dark Alice is familiar. September Hare, another final word. Susara Hime, Goddess of Passion, is the rare for this pack. She switches the attack and defense. She's okay. I mean, there's way better three drops out there. And then, hey, a stamp to change the world, Orb of Illusion. This is the regalia for Refrain Reflect. Um, and it takes a already pretty broken card and makes it even more broken. So that's nice stamped full art. I think I want to use it with Grim. <laughs> Make it so you can untap them. Untap them again. Yeah. Well, the extra draw power seems pretty nice. Mm -hmm. All right, we are starting off with another tool of. I feel like I've opened these same four cards <laughs> already, and it's my second pack. Um, we got some black ribbon, Sylvia's roar, Elaine the fairy. Um, Bed Fulmer? Yeah, it's Bed named after Norse god. No one knows why. <laughs> he can't fly. It's a bird. <laughs> yeah, there's like three birds that can't fly in this set. It's fine. All right, and oh, we got right. Krisha. Oh, man, she went in hiding. Oh, and another... We, well, stamp Yeah, Percival. another stamp. The card itself, no complaints about Percival. It's, it's really nice to see those cards getting reprinted. It might dry, you know, drive the cost down. Because for a while there, that made it a little bit inaccessible. All right, we have another black ribbon, beastly attack. All right, dark rezzer, the dying shadow. So it's what five of the seven kings make appearances, dark versions for the new shadow creature type. And sacred beast memoria. So those are, there's five special magic stones in the set, right? All right, and look at that foil flames, right? This is a beautiful card. It's also going to be really good in fairies. The ability to pin your opponent for a lot. I think it's pretty good on its own, even without this fairy support, if you were to put it in a red deck. Right, yeah. It's it's a great one-drop with, you know, swiftness. You're always wanting that in aggressive red decks. Just a second here. So we're starting off this pack with Send Back. It's a pretty nice uh, spell chant for blue. Um, you essentially can just return target, edition, resonator, or regalia to its owner's hand. So if you're looking for a quick fix to recharge your bows, that is the card for you. 
uh, Magic Matchstick. Uh, that was a fun card in pre-release as well. Final word, final forfeit, if you're looking to take care of Tinkerbells, I think. Another Etna, and we got another Foil Stone. And then a Phoenix, the Flame of the Outer World. Um, this is a nice 4-drop, 900-900 um, for flying. When it enters your field, it deals 300 damage to each resonator your opponent controls. When it is put in the graveyard from your field, you may pay to uh, fire. If you do, you put it back on its owner's field. So that is pretty pretty cool to do additional damage, even if your opponent may have an answer for it. Okay. So I think he might pair well with Sylvia. On his own, he's a little costly for his effect. But. That's true. All right, we got some more soldiers in this set. It's rewriting laws. That card is excellent, and it's a common too. So it's it's really great for limited. The ability to um, all the magic stones you gain uh, they gain tap produce any color will you want until end of turn. Recover up to two magic stones you control. Draw a card. So it's essentially free to cast. You draw a card, and for that turn you can filter mana. Unless we cancel the spell, then you're, but still, to be able to untap the stones you use to cast it and draw an extra card afterwards is pretty nice. Shadow's Memoria, which is the Memoria for Shadow-type creatures. It's, I think that's probably, personally, the weakest of the five special stones in this set. Yeah. We'll rip right into that one. All right, we have Fruit of Yggdrasil. Uh, magic players might recognize it as Wall of Blossom. It's essentially a 0800, and when it enters the field, you draw a card. But you could attack with it. Granted, <laughs> zero is not going to do much, but... Yeah, it can attack. There's yes. nothing that says it can't. <laughs> and some else. Another Flame Sprite. Progen progenerated Demon. Some Shadow, Dark Machina. Ooh, we got a Stamped Ruler's Memoria. Nice. So this is probably a must-have with anybody playing Regalia, because if you have a Regalia on the field, you can put this under the field, not rested, and then you can tap for any of the five colors. That is actually pretty cool. Yeah, that is good. It's a nice, pretty easy way to make sure you have all the mana you need. All right, another mass-produced kind of giant landmine, more fruits, more of the, uh, the Twilight Trio. I think that lore-wise, that trio of cards is fun, but mechanic-wise, they're not great. All right, another Percival, Fairies Memoria, which I think Fairies is definitely going to be very aggressive, and Fairies Memoria, I think, is the key to pulling that deck together. Otherwise, you're just going to have trouble getting the mana you need when you need it. A nice foil Beastly Attack, which is not a great card, but when you you know pair it with the likes of... Um, like Crimson Girl in the Sky or something like that. Prisha as well. Mm -hmm. You can double the trouble with that combo there. Yeah. Alright, All right, let's see what I got here. And um, if I were in a draft, what kind of card I would pick. Valentina Zella is a pretty okay card. Um, it's a 100-500 for one blue. Um, you can banish it. Your J ruler can't be targeted by spells or abilities for a turn. So for your um, J ruler, that's pretty decent. Um, Sylvia's clanmate is pretty okay. Um, it's essentially about the same as the zealot, as well aside from the flying, and it's a 400 400. But if you banish it, you pay one less for judgment abilities, or you can keep it on the field aggressively and um, pay red to give it an additional hundred until the end of turn. Mechanical Knight, um, I saw a lot at pre-release. Uh, it's two, so you can pay anything to cast it. Um, 600, 600, and then you could pay one to give it target attack. So if you need to attack something on the other side of the field, um, you can do that. Uh, Scorn of Alice uh, pretty much is, in magic terms, a thought sees, minus the payment request yeah so you look at your opponent's hand for one black and choose a resonator they have to discard it that's going to kill all the susanao combos which yes. is great because we need that uh, i think i don't know um i think if i had to choose it would probably be between scorn or the mechanical knight for the pack one pick one yeah yeah it's it's nice to have a 
guaranteed, you know, I can play this no matter what mana I go with. It's, I think that's probably stronger in limited than discarding a resonator. Um, because in limited, their strategy probably isn't going to hinge on a single resonator. All right, and then we there's I think there's three more soldiers in this set for Phantom Board to play with, which is always nice for people using that. It makes it even more versatile. Mechanical Sprite, so she still she is technically a fairy, so she can still you know um, combo with your plane sprite or whatever fairies you're playing with to give them buffs. All right, and there's a Lancelot, the Knight of Mad Demon. Definitely a very different take on the art this time than compared to the dual decks. Yeah. So, and it's and they really need to reprint this. Um, it's definitely a must-have in any aggressive red deck. All right. Familiar refrain, another mechanical sprite. The, I think the funny part about this um, flavor for mechanical sprite is anything that flutters about in the sky will be accepted by the fairies. The fairies aren't judgmental, man. They'll that accept is, anyone. That's pretty cool. Light sprite. Sylvia's floor barrier. Shadows. Stone and just a foil cry of the knights. Another uh, reprint from the dual deck. Right, and then opening up with more fairies. In fact, deployable defense device, which I think this is obnoxious and limited because there's hardly any way besides straight up removal to get rid of a 1200 limited. Other than that, I don't think it's great. And then Holy Ground, Four Sacred Beasts, I'm not a huge fan of. It, like, it feels like it's trying to do two different things with both Evolution and Four Sacred Beasts. And then, oh, right, oh. we got a stamp refrain. This is definitely, I mean, probably going to be a huge format changer. They're, she's going to control the meta for a long time. She, she does so many things. Like, just look at how small this text is, trying to fit all of her abilities on there. So that's definitely a good open. Between her and Sylvia, I think she was the top card used at the pre-release that we went to. And then everybody else just went with Sylvia for the aggro. Another reprint, Flash of the Demon Sword, Justice of God Sword. Another rewriting laws, Wall of Ideas, uh, Guinevere's new artwork. I think I like this artwork better than the old one. Yeah, really pretty colors on that. Yeah. She created. <laughs> Alright, more Pride of Nights. Effect. Another Effect of Demers. That's another dual deck reprint. Spellweaver Elf. And there's Grand Cross, which it's, I mean, if you're playing with Alice, it might be good, but it's one of those, if you're not specifically playing with that J Roller, you can pass over it. All right, and we got a Dark Faria. Oh, very good. She's, I'm not sure how the Shadow deck is going to do yet. I feel like there may, they may not have all the pieces to really dominate the meta yet. I think Shadow was a lot of fun when I played it in uh, Limited. I'm not sure how it would be on a uh, constructed format. Right. It seems a little slow. I'll look into it though because that's something I'm interested in. Beastly Attack, Maritime Lookout, Flash, Justice. First of all, another Faria and we got a Stamped Barrier of Flame. Uh, this is a pretty um, good fire edition. Um, if a normal spell you control would deal damage, it deals that much plus 200 instead. So if you're looking for um, extra damage to get into your opponent with your thunder or demon flame, that could help probably do the trick. Yeah. There's another shadow assassin. The, it's when this card deals damage to resonator, destroy that resonator. So kind of a nice replacement for one inch boy who, you know, the... 500 defense versus I think one inch boy is 300 or 400. It's so, pretty low. Yeah, it's one inch boy was very vulnerable, so this might be more durable way to get rid of resonators. And then there's Res Velger, Drinker of Death, another evolution card. And we got a Shadow Dark Alice's Shadow Warrior. I think that's kind of creepy. <laughs> yeah, that, that art is definitely the masks. Yeah. <laughs> All 
All right, it looks like we got a flame wing wyvern, a buried lake, another landmine. You could probably use the landmine with um, Resurd yeah. from Seven Kings. Because if you're you're decking around a lot of standby cards to abuse his effect, they wouldn't know which one. Yeah, Dark I think that's the only case where it'll be not predictable. Dark Arla is uh, personally one of my favorites in the set. Um, he may cost three, and he's a 700-500 flyer. However, his ability, you pay one in darkness, and it deals 600 damage to a target resonator with flying. He doesn't have to tap to do that, so if you have the mana on the board and your opponent has a threat that could probably be easily dispatched by this card, it could do that. Like all those fairies that were printed in this set. Um, we got a reprint of Le uh, Levatin. Le Levatin. And then the invasion ship Golden Hind. Don't rock the boat. <laughs> Alright, Unseen Crusher, Servant of Flex, Legend Philot, Basics, Glorious Castle Town, which is very underwhelming for a rare, I feel like. Oh, I think it got boosted up to a rare. I think it was an uncommon in the dual deck. Yeah. Beastly Attack. It's Nice foil throwing, or I really like that art foil. The cat that did it all. <laughs> okay. Insomnic Dormouse, another flame sprite. Alice's Little Supply Force. Familiar. Spirit of Yggdrasil. This really should have been a fairy. <laughs> It's even got pic like the pixie fairy wings on it. Yeah. Uh, that collation. Oh, Excalibur, the Spirit God's Sword. Um, really goes with the fairy theme. Um, your J Ruler also gets an additional 100 100 for each resonator you control. And it's another one of those regalia that gains your J Ruler can give imperishable if you banish it. But it does cost two mana. So. Unless you're playing Alice, uh, the Fairy Queen, I wouldn't play that. Uh, Beat of the Phoenix Wing is pretty good. Um, it deals 500 across the board to each resonator with flying, and if you're using Sylvia, it does 500 to everything instead. And Burn of Cinders, which it can actually target J resonators, which is nice, it deals 700 damage to them. It gets rid of their imperishable too. Mm -hmm. And then Invasion Ship Golden Hind, there's Unyielding Flames Memoria, which. Um, it says if your opponent's life is exactly 4,000, this card enters your Magic Stone area rested. And then it can tap to make a Resonator deal plus 200 damage when they would deal damage. Which, it's great for aggressive deck, but at the same time, aggressive, you want to swing fast and hard. And the tempo loss of getting this out turn one and it coming in tap may not be worth the risk of playing it. What also said exactly 4,000, so if your opponent had a life gained game. life, yeah, mm -hmm. that could also hurt them. Protection of the Fairies, Storm, Wind Sprite, Water Sprite, Gulp Drake, Beast Queen, another Guinevere, the Foil Stone, and oh, it's the Foundation card below. Oh boy. Yeah. That's, yeah. Going places. <laughs> Going straight to the trash can. <laughs> More magic matchsticks. Still haven't seen Little Match Girl. Let's see. Galahad. Dragon. There's Jean to Arc. Shadow Princess of Purity. When a resonator is put into graveyard from your opponent's build, rest target your resonator your opponent controls. Can be nice for, you know, turning the tables and gain advantage. Hit them once and then it just keeps going downhill from there. I'd like to team her up with Elizabeth. Um, when a resonator on your opponent's side of the field hits the graveyard, you untap Elizabeth, and she gets 400 attack until the end of the turn. Mm -hmm. So you just keep tapping and killing their stuff. All right. Sprite. This one's turning so nervous. Hector. We got a reprint of Exc the original Excalibur. And <laughs> Gawain, the Knight of the Sun, got some new art. He kind of looks like a ladies' man. Look at that. He's got that oh, cheesy yeah. grin. Right. Protection of fairies. It's nice. It's free if you're targeting a fairy. Another holy ground of sacred beasts. Ooh, nice. A vain lady of the lake. She's going to be nice. key for any fairy strategy. 
is she can tap to put a fairy with one or less from your hand into the field. So it can basically give a one-drop fairy quick cast. You can tap her on your opponent's turn and play a fairy. Well, she also boosts fairy J resonators when a uh, fairy hits the field as well. Okay. Really, that, this card is so ugly. <laughs> Turn this one there's Galahad. Another John. Oh, I got a stamped Elizabeth. Nice. But yeah, she's the card I mentioned earlier. When a resonator is put in the graveyard from your opponent's side, you recover her, and she gains plus 400 until the end of turn. That's great if you're focusing on a removal strategy, like Black often does. Once that first resonator hits the graveyard, it's sort of it's this downhill struggle for your opponent. Well, she does only have 900 defense, so she takes damage. She's going to build it up. Another invasion ship. Oh, nice. Stamped little match girl. Yeah, she's going to be very big for fairy tale. Basically, she um, has some synergy with the magic matches. She can get them out of your graveyard or out of your deck. And magic, you know, magic matches by themselves aren't great. You can, you know, chuck them to do 200 damage to something, but well, you can keep doing that. Or when she's on the field, you discard it to deal 400 damage to target J Resonator. That's, I think. The magic matchstick with the haste and um, I think it gives it target attack is pretty nice. Black ribbon, dark Arla. Well, it looks like I got Alice the Fairy Queen and a foil rewriting walls. Yeah, I think playing Alice the Fairy Queen would be a little bit hard because her judgment is eight. And, but you can pay one less to play this ability for each fairy you control. But if your opponent's playing a lot of like burn, I don't think you will be able to keep your fairies alive to keep her on the field. Right, yeah. And especially with you know the couple board wipes like the Beat of Phoenix Wing or Flame King Shout, you're gonna have to there's there's ways to protect your fairies, and that's gonna be the difficult part. Recollection of Dystopia. Your opponent vanishes a resonator. As long as your J Roller is Dark Alice made of slaughter, you may pay a two less black to pay its guard our ability this turn. That's okay. And there's another Phoenix and a foil spirit of Victor Azo. Yeah, I think that was the two rulers for the box. Because you only get two, I believe, at least. Oop. Drop a big disorder. Send it back. Magstick. Yeah, oh, swiftness and first strike. My bad, not target attack. Unseen pressure is a pretty good um, instant. Uh, destroy target resonator with attack 400 or less with a lot of the aggressive decks. Probably in change. And a foil is on. Another Grand Cross, an Arthur Pendragon, who he costs a lot, but he can be a win condition if you know all of your uh, opponent's resonators are forced to target him. So, oh, and a nice foil wing to make your fairies even more aggressive. She's got pretty butterfly wings. All right, Fairy of the Lake. Another mine, dark familiar, a deployable defense device. This is Ziz, the bird that envelops the sky. This is the only beast bird thing out of this entire set that can potentially gain flying. That's very interesting <laughs> that none of the birds have flying. <laughs> and he's the only one in his art who oh, isn't flying. We got a foil uh, Nimue to go with that foil oh, wing. Nice. <laughs> Demon Sword, Rewriting Laws, there's a Dark Melgus, and Beat of the Phoenix Wing, which is great removal. Another Low Match Girl, and a Foil Flame Dragon, probably not recommended. Which is pretty okay if you have a Dragon Synergy deck, but I think it would play something else. Yeah, it's kind of awkwardly placed on the curve. Servant of Reflect. Dollar 
Infection. Barrier flame. Another fully crown. Uh, that that pack was a rough. <laughs> Flame Sprite, familiar for fraying, which makes your fraying even better. Demon, another Gowan, Foil Fairies Familia, and Foil Lords Invasion Party. Alright, Rewriting Walls. Flaming Wyvern, I saw that a lot pre release. Um, it's a three drop 600 600 that can pump itself 200 plus zero for one red, so it's pretty okay. Uh, Peace King Lancelot, another Elizabeth, and I full art Lancelot. I get her face, <laughs> oh, I can't do it right. I get her face, <laughs> all right. And then this is our last pack, so we have. Descenders, Shadow Assassin, another Dark Malgus, September Hair, Barrier of Flame, which it makes um, your spells do plus 200 damage, which could be useful if you're, you know, you're focused around burn, Foil Stone, and all right, there is, how do you pronounce it, Adam Brally the Unfathomable, which it's a very interesting addition, it's a 12 Apostles Cthulhu, and in, instead of straight up hard casting it, you can banish two creatures, essentially. To cast it and depending on what um, attribute they are it does different things when it enters so it's it's definitely interesting um, I'm curious to see what people build around it to make it good yeah I I'm very interested to see what the play out would be against that card so that is all of the packs all right this um this was a very interesting set as far as balancing mechanics out. Um, there's definitely a lot more support for red spells, but the other colors kind of have a thing going for them as well. Yeah, I feel like yeah, I feel like red green had a lot of good cards, which makes Sylvia even better than she already is. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, that's all we have for you guys. Um, we hope that you guys had a lot of fun over the weekend playing with these new cards. Um, I know I did. Yeah. <laughs> right, well, thanks for watching and tune in next time. Peace out.